Hey guys, I'm Ryan here from Coffee Beans Delivered, and today I want to help you find out why your coffee might be tasting bitter, burnt, or sour. It's very hard to quickly identify in five minutes exactly what might be going on at your home, but I'm going to cover off most common reasons, and if you want to read further, you can read my blog about why your coffee might be bitter, burnt, or sour. So the first step in solving this issue is to correctly map the flavours with their names. I often find people mix up bitter and sour and they just taste disgusting to your palate. But if you actually stop and think about what that flavour is, and is it tasting bitter or sour or burnt or some other flavour, then you can really start to hone in on what the issue is. So let's look at bitter first. Traditionally, coffee is always associated with being a bitter flavoured drink, but that's mainly because we only had access to a species of coffee called Canifora, or Robusta as it's more commonly known. And as the name suggests, the plant is robust in nature as well as in flavour. So that's where all the bitterness that we associate with coffee comes from. However, in the last five to 10 years, we've had access to a much sweeter species of coffee called Arabica. Everyone has sort of heard of Arabica, but it is actually a different species of coffee from Robusta. And it's a lot sweeter, and it has a lot more natural complex characteristics. Robusta has twice the amount of caffeine and twice the chlorogenic acids, which is why it is so bitter. But if you're using Arabica, the bitterness should be only very slight, and it should be more of a balanced effect. So if you are tasting a lot of bitterness in the cup, how do you get rid of that? One of the most common causes of bitterness in the cup is actually from over total saturation time. What does that mean? Well, if you're using a plunger, it means you're steeping the coffee in there for too long, causing an over extraction, which will really bring out all of the bitterness. If you're using an espresso machine, you might be running your shots for too long. And at the tail end of the shot, you'll see it go quite white and wavy. And that's where most of the chlorogenic acids come through. And they can taste quite bitter. So in this case, you need to adjust the grinder so that you always get that shot completing around 30 mils in 30 seconds. Now, let's look at sourness. Sourness is caused by too much carbon dioxide. So normally, as the water hits the coffee grinds, it releases the carbon dioxide. But if that process happens too quickly and there isn't enough time, the molecules of carbon dioxide will actually go through the liquid into your cup. So if you're brewing plunger coffee, you want to bloom first the coffee grinds to release all of that carbon dioxide. And that just means adding a little bit of water, maybe about 50 mils to your grinds and letting them steep for a minute. If you're brewing with an espresso machine, you need to be aware of two factors. One, how fresh is the coffee? Because unlike plunger coffee, espresso coffee needs to degas for at least a week. It's winter here in Australia at the moment and the weather is a lot colder. So I'm actually finding that we need to degas the coffee for almost two weeks before it's ready to use. And how can you tell? Well, when you run a fresh coffee through an espresso and you add all of that extra pressure, the bubbles come out, it really blooms a lot. There's a lot of whiteness, a lot of yellow, and it's really overflowing. And that's how you can tell it's too fresh. What you're looking for is a nice even stream, not too thin, but obviously not billowing over the tides. If you wanna learn more about how to degas your coffee during winter, check out my other video on what makes your coffee sour. Now the other factor that could be happening is that you're grinding your coffee too coarse. In which case, this will also cause a lot of that sourness because the coffee grinds itself aren't extracting enough of those luscious oils. And so you're getting an under extracted coffee. As you can see here in this video, there's pouring out the sides at an angle. It's running like water. It's gushing everywhere. There's no evenness, no honey like oakery sort of texture. Now normally, the burnt flavours are from the roast. Doing a dark roast or a city roast, like these ones here from the supermarket, is normally the cause of that roasted flavour. Because these are canifora or robusta beans, remember, and they're quite bitter, so to balance out that bitterness, you just need to roast it a bit darker. But the side effect is that your coffee tastes quite roasty, dark, and a little bit burnt. 
But here, my medium roast coffee is just dripping out, which either means I've over-tamped it, increasing the dosage too far, or I've ground my coffee too fine because it really should drip only once or twice before evenly forming that perfect pour. So see, we can see how dry this puck is. That's because I've put too much coffee in and so you will still get that burnt flavor, but the actual coffee itself, the puck, has just had too much coffee in it and it's now all dry and crumbly. Here, there's a sloppy puck and that is because the grinds were too fine and the water just sat on top and never really got through the entire lot of coffee. So you might still be experiencing a burnt flavor, but by looking at the puck, you can either determine whether it's too much coffee or ground too finely. So I either need to dial back the grinder to make it a little bit more coarse and try it again, or I need to pull back on my tamping so that I'm not pushing down as hard as I need to. But ideally, once you've got your tamping consistent, using the same amount of pressure, your grind amount consistent, so you're always dosing the same amount, and if you don't have a scale, just eyeballing it exactly. But once you've got those factors all consistent, the only thing that you should have to change is the grind size to extract that perfect espresso. So hopefully you know a little bit more about what the flavors of your coffee taste like, and now you can dive into making sure that you get a nice balanced overall flavor. I'm Ryde from Coffee Beans Delivered. Enjoy your brew.